Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed God of, God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, <coughs> ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from rain on, a grass, on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made me with an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are, like th are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them one uses an iron bar or shaft of spear and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 132 in unison. Lord, remember Amen. David and, and all the hardships he endured. How he swore an oath to the Lord, and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the 
roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, and a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was in Ephratah, we found it in the fields of Jerah. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A sign of the fruit of your body will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. A reading from the book of Revelation to John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving as his God and Father, to him be glory and domination forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over 
to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Someone once asked uh, one of our former presidents, and I can't remember which one it was, but I think it may have been Bush the Younger, if the presidency wasn't to some degree about character. And he said, no, the presidency is entirely about character. You can hire clever people to do things that need doing and formulate policies and all of that sort of thing, but the character of the leader is going to be what shapes the presidency. It's going to be what the presidency feels like and tastes like, the way it works. That is going to be up to the character of the person who is in office, and the office will reflect that character. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday in the church year. Uh, next year we'll roll over. We'll start all over again with the first Sunday of Advent. Christ the King Sunday uh, was invented by a pope about 100 years ago, plus or minus a little bit. It's not been on the calendar for very long, and it really kind of sits in the wrong place uh, theologically. But nevertheless, it's about 100 years old. And it, uh, what this Sunday does is we're drawing all things together. What this Sunday does is proclaim that we who follow Jesus are in fact governed by Jesus. It's a chance for us to say, yes, Jesus is my lodestone. Yes, Jesus is guardian and guide. Yes, Jesus is the compass. Jesus is the one who governs who I am and what I do. And that's what it means to live in the kingdom. Now the gospel we have for today is the story of Jesus before Pilate, a short time before Pilate, uh, Jesus was crucified. And it's that encounter, uh, that, that, that dialogue about whether or not Jesus is a king. Because Pilate's been told Jesus is king. Well, maybe you know, he's trying to explore that a little bit. Uh, and Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my fighters would be fighting to keep me from being here. And then he goes on a little bit later to talk about how his kingdom is about truth. Now, a New Testament scholar, N.T. Wright, took this passage apart. Uh, what, he support, what he pointed out was that when Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, he's not talking about a location. What he's talking about is the character of the kingdom. The character of my kingdom is not the character of this world. Because Jesus' kingdom, he says, is about truth. And it's about loving kindness. 
It's a kingdom that comes into being without violence. And Pilate just doesn't get that. He just doesn't understand that there can be a kingdom without violence. Because that's all he's ever known, is kingdoms coming into being by violence and brutality. And also, if you read on another verse or two, it's pretty clear, apropos to what Jesus says, it's pretty clear that Pilate has no idea what truth is. Which I guess if he were alive today might pre-qualify for any number of uh, <laughs> positions in the world if he wanted to take them. But Pilate just does not see the kind of kingdom that Jesus is talking about, the character of the kingdom. Well, we follow Jesus, and we are inhabitants of the kingdom of heaven, that kingdom that Jesus was working to bring. Our character has something to do with it. Is our character the character of the kingdom of heaven? How much has the kingdom of heaven seeped into who we are so that our character, loving kindness, truth, coming into the world without violence, peaceful, and there's all kinds of violence. There's not just physical violence. There's all kinds of violence. Do we live without violence? Because if we, in fact, follow Jesus, if we're part of the kingdom, we are the people who embody those values that Jesus wanted to bring into the world. We're the people that embody that kingdom. And the way that Jesus sort of unpacked that, that it was about peace and truth and loving kindness. How much is your, of your character do you think is, is like the character of the kingdom of heaven? I mean, the simple answer is that none of us do that because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God, and that's just the way it is. You know, we do things like that, but nevertheless, that calling is still there, and the grace of God is still there to draw us into that kingdom, to transfigure us into people who actually do live out what it is Jesus was wanting to do. How much is your character like the character of the kingdom of heaven? Maybe to put it another way, to what degree does Jesus govern your life? Because that's really what this last Sunday is about, as we proclaim Christ is king. To what degree is Jesus the one who governs who you are, what you say, what you do? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We come to you, Lord God, with thankful hearts for all your blessings, most especially for the gift of redemption and the promise of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who inspired the early church and inspires your church today. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Morris, our bishop. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our own parish church, especially Paul, our rector, and all who worship here. Support and guide them with your Holy Spirit to be your manifestation on earth. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank, we thank you, Lord, for those who lead and protect our nation and community. Fill them with your spirit and wisdom and guide and defend them in their service. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your magnificent creation. Let, lead us to be worthy stewards and caring for your gifts. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all those we love and hold dear. We offer thanks today. We, especially we offer thanks for those who celebrate their birthdays this week. Pat Travis, Francis Nichols, Kitty Ray, and Joseph Spangler. Bless and protect them and lead them into a deeper life with you. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. We pray especially for Rick, Helen, Beverly, Ron and Dean, Jody, Kitty, Carla, Peggy, Jerry, Bruce, and Peg. Be with all who suffer and provide them loving mercy that only you can give. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our departed loved ones and for all your, all your saints who have worked to your glory. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of life and all its blessings, grant us continued grace to know and follow your will for us in advancing your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And for the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And peace to that side. Peace to that side. Thanks, please be seated. Good morning and welcome to all of you. It's great to see you here on this last Sunday in a church year. We get to start the cycle all over again next week. Uh, on the 28th as we begin a 
another Christian year. Uh, I do have several announcements this morning, so please bear with me. Uh, first of all, our annual parish meeting is scheduled for Sunday, December the 5th at 12 noon. Uh, it's an important time in the life of our parish because we elect a new class of leadership for the parish on the vestry. Uh, we sort of examine reports about what our ministries have been doing, maybe think ahead towards what's coming next. It's been kind of an odd year again, uh, and so we're finding our way through all of that. Where is God kind of leading us? So that meeting is again December 5th at 12 noon, and you may either attend in person and here, or it will also be on Zoom. And I hope you can, and if you're on Zoom, good morning to all you on Zoom, by the way. Uh, <laughs> If you're on Zoom, you'll certainly be able to vote, as will everybody that's in here. So I hope you'll be able to uh, come in for that. Uh, as we do every year, evening prayer is taking its winter sabbatical uh, because it gets dark so early, it's a little dangerous to be in the church. So uh, just the coming and going. So we'll have evening prayer on this Tuesday, and then we'll take our winter break and pick it up on the day after Ash Wednesday, which will be March the third. Uh, I want to say thanks to uh, that core of leaders, Howard Nichols and Debbie Valenti and John Baimani, who worked so hard offering evening prayer. And come join us sometime. And if you would like to be an officiant, if you would like to lead that, let me know and we'll get you licensed to do that. We have a sign up sheet back in the back for flowers for Christmas. Um, I don't know what to say about that because I don't know where we're going to be yet. We still, it's still not clear whether we will be in here or over in the church. I'm inclined to think we'll be in here. But in any event, uh, if you would like to offer flowers for, uh, for, that, uh, for, the, for Christmas, uh, sign up for what you want to sign up for. And then as things unfold, I may call you back and say, you know, these particular flowers we're not going to need for Christmas. Is there something else you can do? Okay, that's the best way I can think of to do that. And finally, we, of course, have uh, you know, spent the last few weeks uh, considering our stewardship for next year. That is, where do we want this church to go? Because stewardship is about everything. Every decision we make, one way or another, is a stewardship decision about what we're going to do or what our time or what we're going to do with our money or it, all of those sorts of things. And especially sort of considering how do we respond to the goodness of God in our lives. And so this morning at the altar, we will be uh, offering our pledge cards up here at the altar, uh, at the table that's standing in for the altar. Um, if you have them, great. Uh, if you don't, you're still considering your pledge for next year. That's just fine. Get us into them, get them into us when you can. Uh, you can mail them, you can run them by the church, you can bring them and drop them in the alms basin on Sunday morning. However, is most convenient for you. Uh, but today is just our day to offer all of your uh, pledges, whether they're here or not, still to come. Offer them all to God um, as sort of our commitments for next year and where we would like to see the ministry of this church go. And finally, um, on behalf of the entire church staff, have a great Thanksgiving. We appreciate you. We are thankful for you and all of your ministries. Uh, and so I hope whatever you're doing, if you're traveling, please be safe out there. If you're just going to have a nice, quiet Thanksgiving, have a quiet Thanksgiving. I'm going to take an extra couple of days just to try and regroup a little bit. So on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you for all you do and have a great and safe Thanksgiving. And we'll see you for the beginning of the next church year. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this. For the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
Behold what you are. May we become what we receive. accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.